So welcome to Beef Bash, virtual edition, 2020 virtual edition. Um, I'd like to talk today about preconditioning calves. And I know everybody's heard a lot about that. And what, uh, why would you do it? And, and what, what is in a good preconditioning program? So we're in the barn here at UK with quite a few calves. Obviously, they've already been weaned and uh, taken care of. So how do we get our calves to this point, if you're a cow-calf producer? So an ideal calf program consists of, prior to leaving the home farm, calves would be weaned a minimum of 45 days, two rounds of clostridial and viral vaccines, a Monheimia hemolytica toxoid, which is normally called a pastorella shot, castrated, dehorned, and healed, and an individual ID, and then that the calves are also familiar with how to eat and drink. So you've fed them in a bunk, and they're used to drinking out of a water versus possibly a pond or whatever the water source is at your farm. So the question always comes up, why bother? Why do all of this? And it's because you're adding value. You're adding value to those calves. If you took two equal calves that looked exactly alike and one was weaned and castrated, the other was a bull and unweaned, you're looking at at least 10 to $15 per hundred weight for that calf. So that's a lot of value with just um, a little bit of input. Secondly, there's a lot of health benefits um, because what we do on the farm is not stressful, or at least it, it really reduces the stress, which is good for cattle and they tend to respond better to our vaccines and whatever practices we're trying to put in place. So what we're doing with a preconditioning program, we're not guaranteeing health by any stretch of the imagination. All we do is lower the disease risk. So what is risk? So a high risk calf for disease is one that's young or lightweight. Usually they're around 400 to 450 pounds. They're weaned on the trailer the day of the sale. They're often commingled with cattle from many different sources. They have an unknown disease and vaccination history. They're not dehorned or castrated, so none of the surgical procedures have been accomplished. And then they're usually transported um, a certain distance and take in over time. So all of those risk factors, and then you add to that the weather and, and um, change of diet, things of that nature, cause a lot of stress. And those predispose calves for disease. So a good preconditioning program is like getting ready for the Boston Marathon. You're getting ready, getting, getting those calves prepared to go into the next phase of production. The problem with preconditioning programs, although it sounds easy, wean the calves, start feeding, give them some vaccinations, there are a lot of mistakes made. So the, the one thing to do is make sure you do these practices correctly or that steer, that, that wean steer won't be worth the extra money. So one of the, one of the most important things to do when, when getting into a vaccination program, do these vaccines pre-weaning. It takes about 21 days on average for a calf to mount a good immune response. So if you'll do your vaccines about three weeks prior to weaning, you'll get a very good response. You have to pay attention to the label of the vaccine whether it's modified live or killed, because if you use modified live, you would have to have used a modified live in the cow herd if the calves are still nursing the cows. Otherwise, you have to use killed for your first round. Pay attention to label directions. All of that is on there. If you have questions, make sure you ask your vet because you don't want to make that type of mistake. Second thing that we see often in um, that are mistakes is castration mistakes. So the, the number one is when castrating, leaving one testicle in the scrotum. When you, when you administer vaccinations, you need to expect what we call a vaccine sweat, which means that the calves were not gonna feel good the next day. They typically run um, a slight fever, and, and if you're feeding, they're gonna back off their feed for a day or possibly two, and that's expected with vaccinations. Castration, that's where, we, that's where we left off. Uh, castration, the number one mistake is 
leaving a testicle behind, leaving a testicle in the scrotum when banding. Um, fairly common mistake, unfortunately, because leaving a testicle behind creates what we call a stag. And the other possibility is castration, late castration, can create a stag, which just means that steer has the characteristics of a bull, has many of those uh, same characteristics and disposition, which is not, not good for the market, and really no, none of the buyers are going to want to buy a stag. So you need to do that, need to do your castrations correctly. If banding a, a fairly sizable calf, you definitely need to pay attention to tetanus prevention. Um, tetanus toxoids, tetanus anatoxins are both available. So make sure you clarify with your vet which one to use. If you use a toxoid, it's supposed to be used in advance of castration by several weeks. Um, anatoxins, on the other hand, work immediately. But anatoxins lately have not been available. So make sure you get these, uh, these things clarified. Probably um, the, the other very common mistake made at weaning is nutritional, is just feeding far too much starch to start out. Feeding uh, ground corn, finely ground corn, is about one of the worst things you can do uh, right at weaning. There's just far too much starch. And you can get into problems with acidosis, um, and bloat, and also um, get into uh, abscesses as well, liver abscesses. So you don't want to you don't want to feed over 50% corn and what or or any cereal grain for that matter. And when you do, it needs to be more of a of a whole or cracked variety, but not ground finely. Um, offering um, Offering the feed by hand in buckets is really important at weaning because that's the time when you can see who's eating and who's not, who's not feeling good. Um, even though you do your vaccines ahead of time and you're, and you're weaning on the farm, doesn't mean you won't have sickness. It generally means the sickness won't be as severe and they'll respond to antibiotics quickly. So you still have to be on the lookout for calves that don't feel good. One thing we have problems with is if you do give too much starch, they get acidotic or, or subacute acidosis, is they'll go off feed and they look similar to a pneumonia case. So you have to be careful to distinguish the two. And typically with an acidosis, you'll also get some diarrhea. So we wanna start these calves slowly. A good, a good hay, a good palatable soft grass hay is the best way to start. Uh, they make very good stress rations uh, commercially available that are nutrient dense. They make stress tubs that have plenty of mineral in there that the calves like to eat and they're very palatable. So all these things will help them get through that initial two weeks. Usually the first one to two weeks is where we have are really critical and getting a calf over weaning and uh, onto a good start. The thing that you also have to remember in this weaning period before you send them on to the next phase is not to get them gobby fat. Um, that is one of the worst uh, outcomes you can have because the next person down the line doesn't want a fat, a fat calf. They want it muscled, they want it green, that has some growth in it. And if you put a lot of fat on there, uh, definitely you'll get discounted for that. The other thing we see is with weaning, oftentimes they'll, put, they'll be put into a concrete lot. So if you put calves that have never been on concrete before and they're coming off grass and put them on a concrete lot, they're gonna get sore. They're gonna get sore hooves just because they're not used to it. They're not used to the surface. So the sore hooves, they'll be stiff, they'll be stiff and um, have some lameness issues. Those are, are not something you want to have um, from, from the weaning process. The other thing we like to do at, the we at weaning is parasite control. Of course, deworming, an effective dewormer, uh, a, a good combination, poron, ivermectin, along with a drenched dewormer, a white drenched dewormer. Is, is a good combination to use on these newly weaned calves. Cleans them out, takes care of the external parasites as well. 
The other thing we deal with in, in wean calves is coccidiosis. Um, often manifests as bloody scours, but calves that are stressed and usually in confinement on, on concrete are the ones that are at highest risk. So in those situations, you wanna use some coccidiosis prevention if possible, which would be one of the ionophores, Remensin, um, Bovitec, or you could use Decox. If um, treatment is, is necessary, you would use a product called Corid, which is, the drug is Amprolium. But either, either way, to get them treated and before they break with diarrhea is the important part. Once they break with bloody diarrhea, then the damage is done to the intestine. So again, this is a place where you need to talk with your vet, figure out what's gonna work best for you. If you use an ionophore like Remensin, you need to be careful and get them on it gradually. Uh, you don't wanna to go to that full dose immediately because it tends to push them off feed and also give diarrhea. So there is a, there a, a break-in period, which is about half of the normal dose. So be aware of that. Um, I think that is about it for most preconditioning programs. You just want to make your changes, especially to the diet, gradually, so that they know, um, so that you're changing those rumen bugs carefully and and not making really abrupt changes in anything. That's what will really throw a calf off and nutritionally. And once once you do that, um, then your disease risk goes way up. It's really. Um, the, 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 the diet and chances of respiratory disease run hand in hand. So that's all I have on preconditioning. If there are any questions, I'll take them now.